Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome. Oh, look at this. We, we get a little You Are Live Now thing so I can see it and not just anticipate it. Uh, welcome to the Put of the Book show. This is season three, episode number 12 of season three. I am Steve. Got Keith's head to my left. Boom. I got Rodriguez right down there. And Mr. Producer Joe right down there with a the fresh cut, baby. Producer. Fresh Chris. cut. We know what you've been up to since last week. <laughs> Shaving my head. Shaving the head. All right, let's get this party started here. Uh, Keith, why don't you um, get us started? This sharing and caring segment is brought to you by Brooklyn Water Coffee Roasters. From their roastery to your front door. Um, only the finest beans. Uh, only the finest beans are really handpicked enough. and roasted for your to me. pleasure. Tim's on. What's up, Tim? Uh, Brooklyn Water Coffee Roasters. Actually, I just and I mentioned it last week. I just made an order. Uh, just pulled in three bags. Really good. Actually, for the first time, I tried the medium roast because um, <clears throat> I always get the flavor of coffees. And the medium roast is actually really delicious. And I did a little research for you, Producer Joe. I looked into it, and there is a decaf coffee. So, yes, if you don't like caffeine but you like coffee, you can get a decaf coffee at www.brooklynwatercoffeeroasters.com. Uh, there's a lot of delicious flavors out there. One of them is jacked-up cupcake, which is what we like to call our friend Rodriguez over here. Not um, decaf, I'll tell you that. What's up? It's not decaf. That is not decaf. That is not only is it not decaf, it's fifty percent more caffeine than the regular uh, uh, blend of coffee. Uh, then there's also yeah. another one, Cinnabuzz, um, Cinnabuzz, um, which is also another one that's fifty percent more caffeine. Uh, then there's uh, dark roast, dark chocolate. Uh, it's a roast. It's a rich chocolate, delicious coffee flavor, and it's a guilt-free treat. It has how many calories for Rachi? Seto. It is also my favorite. <laughs> it is. I'm not too big into it, but it was it was good. I like all their flavor stuff, but my favorite is definitely the morning wood um, and Cinnabuzz. No pun intended. <laughs> morning wood. Morning wood is really good. Uh, I really suggest you go out there to the website www.brooklynwatercoffeeroasters.com. <laughs> Check them out. Scroll through the flavors. Honestly, you cannot lose with any of the flavors. Um, Oh, yeah. Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Uh, Kelly says decaf is not real coffee. That's true. Decaf and old duels are not real drinks. Um, BrooklynWaterCoffeeRoasters.com. Go out there now. Get your third bag free if you buy two. <laughs> she said, I know you're nodding on my comments, Steve. <laughs> um, if you order two bags, you get your third bag free using the code stay home because that's what you should be doing. Staying home. Uh, www.brooklynwatercoffeeroasters.com from their roaster to your front door guaranteed to ship within 24 hours of its roast date roast date Boom. All right. that's right that was well done Keith I really really enjoy that and then the, the jazz hands are going up <laughs> <laughs> alright so uh, we, we this is like a weekly ritual where we go a little round robin real quick See how everybody's doing during the quarantine coronavirus theater time. Uh, my Adriana, my wife says she needs some morning wood, please. <laughs> Obviously, I Frachi. hope Karachi's uh, got it. <laughs> um. No, it's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. No, I think that's more like Farachi needs to bow out and the three of us run the show. Bow out. <laughs> Just run <around> one way. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see him in three minutes. Go, go ahead. <laughs> you happen. give me too much credit, Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, giving you, I'm, I'm giving you time for a sandwich, too. <laughs> Try. <laughs> like a TV commercial, two minutes and 20 seconds. Just that's do better it. than a dog trying to romance a leg, please, all right? That's my that's my usually my go to, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time I tried it with you? Oh, I mean, <laughs> yes, no, I mean what? I mean so. <laughs> All right, so Keith, um, how's it going, buddy? How, how's 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 your last week going with the, this quarantine stuff? You know, from week to week, it's weird, right? Some weeks are flying by. Uh, thank thank God, um, I am working, 
and working full time. So my life in that sense from scheduling hasn't changed a lot. Uh, but, you know, some weeks fly, some weeks are slow. This week has been slow, and I don't know why. You know, slow weeks, it, you, you do get a little uh, quarantazy. That's like hazy and quarantine all mixed in one. You see that word? Tra- trademark that right now. Yeah, quarantazy. Uh, you get a, you get a little, you know, I get a little loopy sometimes. I'm not going to lie. And when I do, I just I go off for a ride and or I work outside or do something, go for a walk. But, going, you know, other than that, go, going good. I'm keeping my sanity. But I didn't really didn't have it to begin with. You, so, t- so hard to <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. You, you, All right. Let's uh, continue going clockwise. Joe, how's how's it going this last week? Besides the buzz cut? Every every day is like blur's day. It's, uh, it's a work day. It's a, not a work day. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, I don't know that I'll ever get fully adjusted to this scenario. If, if this was like the new normal and it was always going to be working from home it's uh it's too weird it's weird not interacting with people seeing people it's not, uh it's uh the isolation takes a toll on you mentally over the long term and uh yeah just watch uh castaway uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> and, uh, so? you, it, you know and you get it you know after you know the first few weeks you're like i got this i'm okay and the longer it goes on you're like, yeah, I don't, I can't accept this as the new normal. I mean, look, it, it, it's great working from home with my wife also working from home. It's great that we have jobs. It's great that she's not ready to kill me yet. Um, you know, but still, at the same time, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's wearing. It, it wears on you, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it, it takes you back to some of the, those memes that are now all too real that say, you know, I give you a million bucks to spend a secluded, no, no cell phone, no nothing. And meanwhile, people going crazy protesting all over the place, but they have Netflix, they have their cell phone, they have every, all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Rodriguez, how's it going down there, buddy? Down where? I mean, in Florida, where you're at? <laughs> Down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, it's going. I mean, it's going good. Like, like uh, Laura said, you know, right now I got a job. My family's here. All my family's healthy. Uh, I haven't heard of anybody getting sick. Uh, so doing pretty good. Uh, like I said, you know, I get, to, I get a little antsy because I'm a talking about type of guy. I like to walk around and do stuff and, you know, be active. But uh, this can this can wear on you, man. This can start getting to your head, man. I'm telling you, it gets to your head. But uh, <laughs> quarantazy, <laughs> quarantazy, quarantazy a little bit. But um, yeah. we're all healthy. Everybody's good. Uh, so we're gonna just uh, do what we're supposed to do to make everybody feel safer and be safer. Not like the uh, the people out there, you know, protesting. Uh, so. Let's start with the show, dude. Let's talk about the Mets. Talk about the Mets. Right. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's talk Mets. All right. Um, I want to hear Farachi's so, life with a, a baby in the house and wife and two sure, kids. Sure. Tell us about your life. My life is fantastic. Tell us everything about your life. I'm sure your wife wants to know. All right. Um, <laughs> I love I love the picture with the, the the boys and the beast. Oh yeah. That was um, that was a nice little uh, picture. Like I, I, I do my own little like longer walk and whatnot. Uh, so I got that as I was walking. I was doing like a five mile uh, thing yesterday. Crotchy, your picture froze. That's what I got. You're froze as hey, if like you you're froze. smiling at me. It's really I froze. Karachi froze. Yeah, That's and it, it, the smile, the I frame you smile froze at. It's like you're looking and smiling at me. It's creepy. Fix it. That yes. Oh wait, am I moving in slow motion? <laughs> well, no, you were like, this. no, you are frozen. Wait, there we go. Are you back? Yeah, he's back. It'll catch up. It'll, it'll, it'll. He's behind. It'll, 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 it'll definitely catch up. All right, so let's talk some uh, New York Metropolitan baseball. Um, we've, we've, there are certain things that we've touched on, uh, a, a few times over the last few weeks, but, uh, there are some, you know, updates to these things. So number one is, will there be baseball in the year 2020? And so, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, 
it's a certainty, I think, at this point. Um, just when and the logistics of, uh, of it is is going to be what is to be determined. But, and I know Rodriguez always frowns upon me when I say this, but South Korean baseball is back, baby. And guess where it's going to be? It's airing on ESPN because that's the Yo only Joe. baseball. I'm going to watch Yo it. Joe. Chung Cho and Kim <laughs> Jong Un. I'm down with I, it, bro. I'd rather, I'd rather uh, watch the MLB show. MLB the show. MLB the show. I'd rather watch. I'd rather watch cartoon players playing that Korean baseball. Yeah, why? It, I, I, thought, I thought they were pretty. I guess pretty good. I mean, I get well, bored. I'll be honest. Like you, uh, to your point, I, I get bored watching Japanese baseball and stuff like that. Uh, I'd rather watch like the, uh, uh, South American, Dominican baseball, and um, Venezuela and stuff like that. But you know, I mean, it's baseball. Yeah, it's a. So watch a video game. At least you got the real players on there. If it's good enough for Tom Selleck in Japan, it's good enough for me. I mean, isn't that what it is? Because you don't know the players? Is that it? Because you don't know the players? Is that why? No, because I don't care about any other league but the major leagues. Makes sense. I get it. (laughs) I don't care about the minor leagues. I just love baseball. I watch it. Yeah, I get it. They basically beefed up minor leagues. The triple A teams out there. That's what they really are. Yeah. And major league players who who can't sign a contract here. Triple A player. All the guys over there, all the guys in our Triple A system are play, are starting players over there. It's still fairly clean baseball, so, though. I mean, you know, just for the love of the sport, I'll watch it. But I get your point. Yeah, you can you can watch yeah. it. Go yeah. <laughs> you get me. I get you. We get each other. Eh, you know. Hey. Oh, hey. Forget about it. Forget Don't about agree. it. What's the matter for you? What's the matter for you? It's a matter for your face. All right, so yeah, I, I, you know, in in this day and age where there's nothing to be, there's no new content uh, on on ESPN, and like stuff like the Michael Jordan documentary is getting like ridiculous, insane ratings. Uh, the NFL draft is getting ridiculous and insane ratings because there's just nothing else to watch. So there's gonna be people out there watching Korean baseball, and uh, I, I I think the the biggest thing for me is watching how they're playing. You know, not. Uh, who wins, who loses, but how they're going about playing and kind of seeing a little um, uh, glimpse into how Major League Baseball might proceed with things, you know, th- with the new normal, as as Joe said earlier. Um, Joe, that's not ginger ale and whiskey, right? Oh, root beer and whiskey, <laughs> no. sorry. No, it's just decaf coffee. Decaf coffee. All right, Kelly, right? you heard that? <laughs> there it is. Shame. You drink coffee at night. You drink coffee. Shame. You can sleep, okay? Deep, regular in the morning, decaf at night. I'm getting me some of that, that Brooklyn water uh, decaf because uh, it's the, the morning with chocolate, the the dark chocolate is excellent. No, no. <laughs> uh, Farachi, has a, Farachi has a corner on the morning wood. So. <laughs> hey, Joe. I, so um, it, it's interesting because you and Eric, who's also uh, – um, uh, part of the Cine Sports Talk family, and he does the Just Too Sweet show, the wrestling show, which is actually going to be on after us tonight. Um, but that guy drinks coffee in, until 10, 11 p.m. What, 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 what's your cutoff for caffeinated coffee? Like, what time do you switch? Coffee, caffeine has a five hour half life. So, I, I, we drink coffee in the morning, cat and I. We, this is no different now than it was when we were going into the office. We drink a pot of coffee. We make a pot of coffee in the morning. We drink coffee. At night, we have coffee, 6, 6.30, a, a pot of decaf. Um, you know, we switched out for the decaf probably about a year ago at night, and we sleep much better, obviously. So but if you're going to drink coffee and go to sleep, you got to figure it's five hours before you start to wear off. So. Yeah. My my rules for being able to sleep at night is crystal meth stops at ten, cocaine at noon, and coffee at five. It's <laughs> <laughs> a nice nice mixture. Tom plan. Um, all right, so th- now the the getting back to the baseball stuff. Uh, now it seems as though it's um, you know I, I told you guys last week that there were some rumors around that um, some of the spring training facilities should start expecting players in the next few weeks. Uh, so I, I, I'm guessing we're going to start seeing a little bit more of that. And I think the only thing definitive right now or close to it is those three divisions 
um, you know, uh, that's how it's going to make sense. And you know, you know what's funny to me is that I listen to uh, this podcast. It's uh, it's called the BS Podcast. It's uh, Bill Simmons, and uh, I, I listen to it all the time. It doesn't matter what he's talking about. But he he's like one week he's more pessimistic about sports coming back, then the next week it's more optimistic. It's just it's just how it goes. And so, but he has the most confidence in the NBA coming back. He never mentions. He never talks about how. Baseball is like they're having solid plans now. And he says, you know, football, I don't even know how they're going to do football. They're going to have to spread it out days of the week. You know, maybe they're going to have to do Sunday, uh, Saturday through Tuesday games for football, which is great. I'm all good with that. Uh, <laughs> but like uh, the Cowboys, they have a, a, a practice facility that has four football fields. Of course, Jerry Jones does that they're. Uh, supposedly top of the line uh, NFL level fields, but it just surprises me that uh, that he is like like NBA, NFL, baseball in in terms of what what's going to be played. I think it's the opposite. I think it's baseball because of just what we've been hearing, and then like. You know, NBA, they're going to play like a five-game rest of the season and just go straight to playoffs because, you know, those guys are in arenas, so they have to get ready for concerts and whatnot. Those dates are booked, so it's going to be a little bit more troublesome for them. But for me, it's clearly it's baseball, right? They're going to try to bring back the end of the 2020 NBA season? Yep. Playoffs. But like I, I heard an interview with Mark Cuban, and he, he's of course he's got insider stuff. But he he talked about how there'll be like a five to ten game end of the regular season. Um, but I can't imagine like teams that are like the Knicks that are clearly not making the playoffs. Why would they even? What are they even Why? doing? Why? Yeah. yeah. So um, and, and, and anyway, I, I thought that was interesting uh, how it wasn't even like on his radar, um, but it's all over everybody else's radar. All right, we've had a few weeks to digest this potential news that I haven't heard much since. Uh, if any of you guys have heard more, chime in, please. Uh, but the whole uh, Mets ownership situation with uh, Rodriguez's favorite other Rodriguez. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Are we talking well, about J-Lo and A-Royd? Yeah, J-Lo and A-Royd. So, well, let's start with you, Rodriguez. Have you softened on your stance at all in the last few weeks is it is it truly that big of a deal uh, you know what I, I gotta be honest with you i have softened my stance has softened completely just my stance i still got plenty of morning wood <laughs> <laughs> but, but here's the, the thing with the thing with him is if i read back and i and i and, and i see what um, our current ownership is doing and and, and kind of acting like and stuff that they've done I, I mean, I could, I, I could see, I could see a Royd running a team and running it in an extravagant way, like the Skankies, getting whoever he wants. He has another. I, I think he has some another a partner that's full of money. Uh, another guy came up the other day that wants to buy the Mets, and they still got that Steve Cohen guy out there. But getting back to uh, uh, Aroid and JLo, I mean, if, if they form a, uh, some kind of company and, and buy the Mets, why not? I mean, it's going to be power appeal again. We'll have money in the bank. Uh, it's Aroid versus Jeter because that's kind of why he's doing it. That whole I'm a Met fan from when I was born is bull crap, bull hockey, nonsense. Otherwise, he would have been a Met a long, long time ago. Okay. So he wants to compete against uh, Jeter and beat him. I mean, we're already beating him. What's the difference? The Marlins, the Marlins can suck on it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not hating it as much as I did once upon a time. How's that? Which is really, really hard for me because I, I hate a boy. So Man. I want to put it in these these uh, words here. When uh, when we spoke about this, I think it was like three weeks ago or so, two three episodes ago. I you know I said that I was on the fence at a seventy thirty split. I had seventy percent. I did not want it to happen, but thirty percent. Where where are you at? Me, I I've climbed up to thirteen percent. Thirteen from negative a thousand. 
right? Three weeks, a couple of weeks later, I'm at 13%. I'm okay with it. You know, I'm still pretty, pretty dead set against seeing his stupid face. And, and well, yeah. I feel so much better hearing that because I, I swear to God, when you when you suggested this topic again, I thought you were going to pitch that it was a good idea suddenly. And I was like, I, I was going to lose all faith in who and what you are. Thanks no, for no, being true well, to yourself, Rodriguez. I get it. I get it. I, mean, I get it. I'm it made me so nervous. I, I, had to go, I had to call my therapist, even though I, I don't even have one, and I called him up. Because the like, world, I don't know who you are, and I'm like, I don't care. You need to listen. The world Rodriguez is might be going for Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez for sure. Rodriguez. Well, uh, uh, cousin, cousin Max says um, they uh, if they get the Mets, then they split. It's a Mets soap opera, and I think I, I uh, sarcastically said, you know, J Lo is in relationships for such a long time. There's no way that they would ever break up. Exactly. All right. You said that in, you said that in reaction to me. Hold on, Roger, because I, I don't know if it's because I was talking at the same time or you sound like you're a little muffled. I said that's actually a valid point. It was my fault, sorry. Yeah. As silly as it sounds, I mean, it's actually a valid point. Um, that's that's in the 87 percent style of why I don't <laughs> at all. But at, at the end of the day, you know what? Screw it. Um, as long as they don't get rid of our Van Wagon it and let and give him some money to do what he needs to do, I'll be okay. Because to me, the guy's done a the guy's done a good job. So I can't even imagine if he had a little bit more money to play with. According to what everybody says, that the Will Ponds hold the purse strings and they don't want to do anything. If, he, if that's true, then you know. Um, He's done a really good job. We have a pretty good team, so I'm I'm still excited. Yeah, and uh, so Max, who, you, you let us know in the comments who would you want the to to purchase the Mets? Is it Steve Cohen? I mean, I I think Steve Cohen is still the guy that most of us would want, right? Ryan Hum sucks. He does True suck. story. That is yes. so the kid ain't lying. Mm -mm. He's right. <laughs> Uh, we, we got to get Jacob talking so he can echo it. <laughs> uh, oh, he uh, Mark Cuban. I would love. I would love that. I would love I'm Mark Cuban because he he's he's like he uh, he's learned all his lessons already about owning a team. So he like this is he'd be come in and oh and forget about it. He has to deal with a salary cap in the NBA. There's no salary forget cap in baseball, baby. <laughs> forget about it. No salary cap. He'll spend. First, he, he likes to spend. He'll spend. Ten years, ten years, four hundred million dollar contracts for everybody. Everybody no, gets it. No, 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 no. Whatever owner we it's get. It's fine. No, no, no. It's no, fine. I but it's Mark it. Cuban. No, he want will. It. Yes, but it's he'll even cut them. The Yankees. He'll cut oh. them. Oh yeah, poor poor Yankees with a hundred and some odd wins. Oh. Okay, I I get what you're saying. <laughs> But listen, do you want to be stuck with a Stanton? Ow, my left nut hurts because I stubbed my toe. Mark, while I was Mark, Cu Mark Cuban will take Stanton like this and toss him aside and sign the next guy. Hey, if he could sign a 10-year contract and say, listen, you play or you don't get paid. Boom, I'm all for it. But he doesn't, it, Mark Cuban doesn't have to sign a 10-year contract with these guys because he can't afford to pay them. Mark Cuban can have a three or four or five year contract with these guys, pay them, and then when they're useless, Boost it up. what happens? See you later, alligator. You know? I, that, good that's point. Simple. I'd rather them pay him up front. Hey, listen, front, you're good yeah. now. I'm gonna I'm gonna front load your contract, and it's gonna be incentive based. This is your base. It's a high base, and if you hit forty home runs, you get this much more All Star game, and just give them a shit ton of incentives. That's not gonna happen. Say shit, I mean to say shit. Shit's a bad word, right? Day, that's a daydream. That's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen is Mark Cuban owns the Mets, and he pays everybody and says, "Come on, play to pick somebody's ass." Pretty much. That, that that's how it happens. The, you're <laughs> Guys, right. It, look, I'm, I'm excited. Team, Come on, Cuban. They should have asked him that. Jo uh, Joe Buck has a new podcast, and he had Mark Cuban on there. The Relatable Billionaire uh, was the title of it. And they should have asked him. I like oh, Mark uh, Cuban. What do you think about he buying the match? And he helped Turtle make a lot of money. Can't help you. Hey, hey, hey you see Corne commented he wants a well-structured, balanced team. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to we're going to talk about uh, that in a few minutes. Um we have we have not done a uh, Mets moment of the week, and that's my bad because I 
I'm slipping up on that, but I have a Mets moment of the week, and let's yeah. uh, we're gonna get to that. But it, it, it <laughs> you see what Cornet uh, Cornet said? I don't want a bot team. I would rather have a well structured team. Yeah, what were you kind of what we're dealing with now? What were you five yeah. minutes? <laughs> Rodriguez just mentioned that. Well, he, he, put, he, he, put, he talked about this five minutes ago. He put that up there sixty seconds ago, so it would be four minutes ago. But still, he's slow. <laughs> two and two and two and a half, three minutes. Yeah. Cor- Cornet yeah. can't be Cor- perfect. Cornet, Cor- 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 right? <laughs> and Cor- now it's time for the Mets moment of the week. Thanks, Adrian. All right. Yeah. All right, let's get rid of this thing there. I'm learning my lessons as I go, and let's share this baby out. And uh, let's get to this Mets, Mets moment of the week here. Which is a phenomenal moment. Just is. And it's recently in the news a couple days ago. Here we go. Are we ready? No. Right center field. Hit well. And there's the record. Mike Piazza off the big board in Shea. And he is now officially the greatest home run hitting catcher in the history of the game. It's going to feel so good to finally have that done. The entire men team standing on the top step of the dugout awaiting Mike and applauding. A, a, Mike, a Mike Cameron sighting. <laughs> I remember. I liked Mike, Mike Cameron there? until he just got goofy and crashed into people's faces. <laughs> All right, so that that happened. Uh, I think it was just a, uh, a few days ago. I I, I saw that <clears throat> uh, it was the anniversary of it, and so that that was number three fifty two, and he went on to hit uh, four hundred twenty seven home runs as a catcher. Uh, Maureen, yes, the clowns are back, it. baby. Uh-huh. You got a hole in your nail. Uh, Max is not a Piazza fan. Explain yourself, Max. Well, Explain you yourself know, the best now. In history is hey, you know, you know that right down here, you can let people call in and explain themselves, right? Well, well we're, we're not gonna to not not to call in, but if you if you want to come in, if Max, you want to come in on video, because we're still ironing out the the, the phone call thing. Uh, let me know. I'll, I'll I'll shoot you over the link. Um, he says my catcher is Carter, and Carter got us a ring. Yes, very true, very true. But Carter didn't make the uh, the. Uh, what was it that we did last week? World Series. Team. The Mount Rushmore of Mount, Ru- Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. He didn't make make it there. That's because we had Tom Seaver pitching. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Every time we get some. Uh, and that song, speaking of that song, uh, on, I think it's Netflix, The Natural is out. Um, I'm sure everybody who's watching as a baseball fan has seen it. If not, Go out there and watch The Natural. It is a classic baseball movie. Um, sat through it about one and a half times already. One of my favorites. One and a half. <laughs> Did you guys ever see Game Six? Not the, not the game, but the movie. No, no. Check it out. Game Six, nineteen eighty-six. Wow, great endorsement. Very nice. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited to watch that. You know what? Wow. You can't wait. Over me and it's okay about the, the A Rod and J Lo thing. And I, I had something I've got to say to you guys. <laughs> For how many years now? And, and be real and be honest with yourself. How many years now <laughs> have we complained about the Will Pond and called them the Coupon and talked about their, you know, the Ponzi scheme and how unfortunate and how they're broke and how they're cheap asses. How many years have we been doing that? 15? 10? 15 years? How I, many years? At 10, 15? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I, at the same way Rodriguez softened about Aroid, I, I have found myself thinking, 
you know what? We hate him. It's a knee-jerk reaction. We hate him. Why? Because he was a cheating player. He was a dirty player. He was a skanky. He's he was a cheating. He was a roid. There's so many reasons to hate him. But really, how much worse could he be as an owner than the Will Pump? You know, I mean, really. All right. Uh, I'm up to 13. May That's May I rebut that? If you're done, may I rebut that real quick? I'll make it short. So I agree with you. There, there, I have no argument in anything you're saying. Uh, I have been one of the biggest. You have a rebut. I have, I have been one of the biggest. I have a rebut till uh, one of the biggest uh, people against the Will Ponds. Um, but since 2015, I have to say, maybe 2014, uh, and I just didn't realize it's a 2015. The Will Ponds have changed their approach and they've done so much better and you have to give them credit uh they they've done a lot more careful vetting in who they're hiring yes there's still some mistakes obviously beltron right but they didn't foresee that coming obviously um but if you watch the way the beltrons have conducted their business since 2014 2015 in my opinion they have done a better job in who they're hiring and stepping back and not butting their nose in as much as they have in the past. Uh, yes, I am still sick of them. Yes, I want them to move on, but I am not so sick of them that I'm willing to take A-Rod and J-Lo in place of them right now. I think they're doing they're doing a good job right now. I think they brought in Brody. I think Brody's doing a really good job. I think they're not being cheap, but they're being smart in how they're spending. Uh, could they splurge a little bit? Of course. Every Met fan would love that. Uh, but really, can you honestly say in the last five years, the Wilpons have done a terrible job? That's my opinion. I mean, you know, uh, I, I want a new owner, but I don't want a new owner like it, just to have a new owner. And I think J-Lo and Rodriguez, uh, A-Rod, sorry, Rodriguez, A-Rod is that. You don't call me in well, no, because I, I call you Rodriguez and I don't want to call A-Rod Rodriguez because then I'm associating the two. You're going to throw me in there on top of J-Lo if you wanted to. That was fine. <laughs> hey, he definitely I, wants to be on top of J Lo. Top of J Lo and A Rod <laughs> waiting outside the door. Um, I think having them or wanting them in is just wanting them just to have a new owner, and I don't agree with that. I like the Cohen guy because I think he's a business guy who's willing to spend, and he's he's smart and he'll let people he'll put people in place who he's know what they're doing. Crook. He's a big time crook. Okay, rob rob a championship for us. Okay I just think that? that the Wilpons have not done a bad job in the last five years to sum it up. And wanting A Rod and J Lo in place of the Wilpons is just a desire to get rid of the Wilpons. And the Wilpons have earned the right to not deserve that in the last five years. I still want them out, but not in place of just anything. If they've done I, a good job, why do you want them out? Because I'm tired of them. They they they've they've they've, they've listen. But they've done a good job. The they've done a good job years. in the last you five years, but they've done so much damage that. that the reputation of the Mets have suffered so much that uh, we're not going to regain some of that reputation, and that reputation does count no matter how much anybody wants to admit it winning when it comes to attaining new talent. Uh, you gotta but l l let me ask you a question on, on the good job thing over the last five years. But uh, what... what, what, what no, not put poop and milk, but what, why have they done a good job? I mean, we, we have not been in any discussions with any of the top players that have been free agents. Okay, who? I, like, the, let's, let's, let's go, let's discuss that. I don't want to get too much of it because we'll hit here for an hour, but give me two players and Rendon. I can talk about that easily. Rendon. Okay, I can't argue that. Rendon should have been. <laughs> no, no, seriously. I'm not going to be. I'm not no, gonna no, 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 no. It's just Rendon, funny. It, Rendon should have been hired. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Rendon's a point. Hold on, I'm sorry. Why Rodriguez? Yeah, but it's a dumb point. Why be? Why even be in this discussion for a guy like Rendon when you have McNeil and you have a JD Davis? Oh, young guys. Don't that are don't come. You can't. That have money that that'll save you McNeil money. You could play left. Rendon at third. McNeil could play second. Listen, Rendon. Rendon's a premier talent. Uh, I don't have an argument to say that we should not have been in the Rendon conversations. Yeah, and have, yeah. Also, in addition... Decision. That's your argument. It's a business decision. That's right. your argument. 
it's a it's a piss piss poor business decision all four of us still don't know that they were in that conversation we don't know that doesn't matter a new york team should be involved in every major player discussion Let's go the I agree with I agree with I agree with that. A, a New York team should be on the radar in every big free agent. But Joe, they might have been, and we just don't know what took place. But that doesn't mean if you're on the radar, it doesn't mean that you want to go get the guy. It means that you you can you can get the guy if you throw yourself in there to get him. But you know, we why. First of all, Rendon is like on, on what 31, 32 years old. You got a 27 year old guy who has 323 with 20 home runs, costing you nothing. You got Jaden Davis with 20 home runs at 300 last year, costing you nothing. It's a stupid decision to go get Rendon when you got two guys that can play the position for you for, for five or 10 years, save you a ton of money that you could probably use to sign somebody else that you really need. When, ha- when do you think either one of those guys are going to drive in 120 runs a year? And he and and I and, and and based on your decisions or your discussions okay. over the last let's, X amount of years, slow down on that. He's got the ring. For Frachi, one oh. player does not make a team. Really? The look, look what did Bryce no. Harper do for the well, Phillies last year? One player does nothing for a team. So okay, so uh, Keith, now, Keith. Keith. in the lineup would have done great for us, but how much more of the collective versus him? And the collective, I mean, JD Davis. McNeil and whoever else played third base would have done so much better that Rendon would have been that deciding factor to push us to that next level. Well, we, we have a staff for that, right? We, we have war for that, right? So we can look up the war? We do. So we would have to honestly take J.D. Davis's war and McNeil's war, add them together, or however. I, I don't know the math behind that. You're putting me on a spot, but no, we could okay. take a 162-game average between the two put them together and see what the 162 game average with Rendon is and go from there. I can definitely take that away for next call. Uh, next call. Wow. I'm at <laughs> You're at work. <laughs> yeah, I'm at work. Jesus. Anyway, um, you know, but it, to me, uh, 6.4 war he had last year, 29.1 war for a career for Rendon. Uh, Rendon is amazing. Uh, I think we should have definitely been in a conversation. I don't think necessarily we should have definitely hired him. Because they did hire him for seven years, two hundred and forty-five million. Do you think he's worth seven years and two hundred forty-five million dollars worth of commitment when we do have we'll JD see. Davis and McNeil? I don't know. It was a business decision, as Rodriguez said. And you know what? I can't say that we made the wrong decision. I do hope. I think if we were not in the conversation to hire him, or hire his services, or or sign a contract with him, that is wrong. But at seven years, two hundred forty-five million, I don't agree with that. Based off of my previous comments, I don't like these long-term, huge contracts. Now, at thirty-seven years old, you're going to be paying this guy freaking thirty-something million dollars a year. It sounds, you know, it's it's, it's a bit much for me as, as a fan because I've seen, and maybe I'm a little damaged as compared, you know, as a Met fan. But I've seen what it means to be that committed to a player in the long term when he's old. On it the average, work. it doesn't work on the average. Long on the average, don't work. Long term deals, percentage wise, they don't work. So I get the fact that we could be in on the top. Okay, maybe we, can we go get this guy? Yeah, probably we'll get this guy. Do we want to go get this guy when we got these other two guys and we got this, we got this, we got this? We I mean, JD Davis and huh? McNeil are amazing, yeah, man. Okay. I mean, would, would you would you trade and would you guys trade JD Davis and Jeff McNeil for Anthony Rendon? Yes. No. In a heartbeat. In, in, like, I would do it 17 times. Let me, let me ask you something. What is the stat war? What is that? What is that? Actually war, for? war is wins above replacement. Thank you. What was Rendon's war last year? Rendon's was 6.4. 6.4. Okay. What McNeil's was, was with six more wins last year. Think about it. Y- what was the Mets have done with six more wins last year? We would have been in the playoffs. Two or four. Okay, but let's look at this. J.D. Davis, his war was one. Was one. And I think – I'm not sure what that's based off of. That seems a little crazy, but okay. Uh, and 
McNeil was 4.9. So it's 5.9 if mm -hmm. you put them together. It's so what would we have done with half a game? McNeil and Rendon. It's five. It's five. Uh, let's just, you know, it's five to what? Seven? Five to six? Difference? One game difference? That one game difference, if it's if, like I'm saying, I mean, I get it. He's one game better than McNeil. But here's the thing. There's other guys that could help you win more games, too. That and, and, right. And you're talking to players. Down, you can get them. The two are 5.9. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rendon was what six point four for Archie? Exactly. See, you, okay, you're so stuck. Well, you, that's exactly that's exactly what Billy Bean does. We're well, we're, we're the New you're York Mets. Point, you're gonna take. Point <laughs> we shouldn't play money ball. Games. Listen to me. You're gonna take point five more games, and you're gonna pay that point five more games twenty five more million dollars a year than what you're paying. Does that make sense to you? How how often was Davis and McNeil in the lineup at the same time? Davis wasn't playing I, I, every day. Wow, that's bad. No, I, no, it's not a gotcha moment. It's just he's he's not an everyday guy, and he's not going to be an everyday guy this year either. Okay, but I'm just saying. So if you just if you just throw McNeil versus Rendon, you got to take potential, right? And then you got to take current. So current, <laughs> he is one point five more games per year than McNeil. Potential of McNeil with his average and his power surge going up, he potential. could equal Rendon in a year or two, right? Well, you, you have to look at potential yeah. when it comes to somebody like McNeil. You could also go back a couple of years when he so played 50 you, games in two seasons. If you if you take the math between potential and the 1.5 game difference between McNeil and Rendon, is that worth 20 some odd million dollars more per year to tie up in your payroll that you can pay out to pitchers and future other prospects, and so on and so forth. My my point is that a New York team should not be nickel and, nickel and diming things. That's not nickel and diming. That's 20-something freaking million dollars, bro. You okay. can have four bullpen arms to kick ass and get you five games. That's a we lot did that. of freaking money. How many bullpen arms did we sign? And, and, how many, and we blew 30 Who saves. Who could have foreseen that? It's Keep a potential. Under, Listen, it's a potential RT that you got to look at. Ownership did the right thing, and the potential factor didn't work. You can hire Rendon. He could pull a hammy. Then a hammy leads to a whole left side thing, and then all of a sudden he has a brain <laughs> hemorrhage, and he's out for three years. Well, I was saying mean, dead Lowry. But these things happen. <laughs> these things happen. happen. It's, it's all it's potential. Wash. It's not that big a deal. You can you look no at Rendon's stats. Oh, 6.4 <laughs> war. It's potential. He could come into 2020 and he could pull a half a nut string and be out for a year and a half. Who knows what's going to happen? It's all potential. And I'll take my risk on the game and a half difference, $20 million different potential, and able to take that $20 million and invest it in other parts of the team because baseball is not about one player. Nickel and diamond. Baseball so, is not so, about one player for our team. So you're That's getting – uh, you're wrong. Three, vis three Vizio televisions instead of a, a TV that lasts nine years. No, dude. It's about, do you want a TV? Hey, or do you want a TV, a streaming stick, a DVD player, <laughs> a sound system? Yeah. The TV cheap. by itself does nothing. You get static on your screen. You need a supporting cast for that TV. You put Rendon out there by himself with a bunch of AAA players on the other eight positions, nothing happens. But that's not what we're doing. <laughs> that, oh, that's, that's not what we do. So, so let, let me ask you, it, 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 the the money that we saved on Cespedes could have could have paid Rendon for a year, right? Listen, Cespedes' the name is Cespedes. the money. The, the money we saved on Cespool could have went into the bullpen. <laughs> it could have went to other areas we needed. Do we need offense? What do we need more last year? What do we need more? If you looked at last year and you said, "Hmm, I want to win a championship next year," where would you put your money into? Really From special. last year, bullpen. Okay. So why would you put more offense and not address your bullpen? What what money did we spend this offseason on the bullpen? We're hoping that things change. Well, we spent Hope. it last year. We're hoping that last year's it's investments. Exactly. So sure. But you can you blame them? Money's yeah. money. If I tell you I'm paying you $10 million a year and you suck one year, shit, I hope you are good the next year and live up to $10 million. That's a lot of freaking money. I, I, it's more money than I'm going to see in I can't tell you how many years, you know, so I, I, I understand. 
I'm paying you $10 million a year. Shape up or ship out. Unfortunately, with contracts, you don't ship out. You just collect and leave. Get out, Bobby Bo. <laughs> Bobby <Right>. Bo. <laughs> so I understand the Mets' hesitance to sign these big the contracts. To blow it. And probably blow Will Pond, too. But he blew yeah. it. It's like those stupid ass memes you see. You let's not want the best defense. third baseman in baseball. Well, you, you know, it's, it's McNeil. It's kind of like fantasy. Okay. It's kind of like those, uh, what is it, those fantasy sports things where you get like $32 to spend on your team and you got to pick a pitcher, an outfielder, or a left fielder. You got to spread the money out. Because if you put all your money in one position, guess what That's happens? That's fantasy. There's no, there's no sport. There's no uh, salary cap. But in it's baseball. a relative. It's a relative. And the money. Look at look 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 what look look, look look at look at the Red Sox. Would you rather be in a position the Mets are in right now, or that the Red Sox are in right now, having won four titles, spending all this money, and then oh, I can't afford Mookie Betts. Want to get under the south the luxury uh, the cap? Well, I'll trade him. I don't have to spend yeah. the twenty nine million dollars. I would love to be the Red Sox. Spend some money, about? Mets. Spend some money, Mets. That's what I'm complaining about. Spend some damn money. Relax. It's okay. Take it easy. I'm taking Take it easy. easy. Take it easy, huh? Take it easy. Take All right. Uh, here, here's here's uh, one. Yeah? Oh. Oh, Rod- Rodriguez is showing up twice here. What, what's going on? He's a sperm cell chasing itself. Look, here. We got two Rodriguez's. Oh, it's not Sweet. loading. This is my nightmare. It's not loading because my PC is not. Because we talked about we talked about the world pass for forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fault. I'm sorry. Right. No, no, no. It's Rodriguez's fault because he was wrong. I'm not wrong. I am hundred percent right on not getting Rendon and keeping McNeil and Davis. I'm always. 100% right. You're always right. No, I am right about this. Let's go to um, uh, the play. How, how do we, how do we know, um, Rodriguez? How do we know uh, if the players are training properly? Like, I mean, clearly it's in their best interest. But when when you're up against a, I don't know when the season's going to start. How do they how do they stay in shape? How do they do that? Well, they they, they seem to have this wonderful thing called Instagram, where they're putting all the little workout that on. Um, <laughs> Working out there, Smith, uh, freaking um, uh, Buffalo is working out there. You know he's in Parkland, guys. You know he's right in Parkland. We should go visit him. Let's go there. get him. Let's go. Let's go get him. I, I I know the lake. I know where the lake is. We should go get him. Uh, <laughs> go. Yeah, you don't really know. Thinking about about a snippet, a TikTok snippet of them working out. And why why are you working out so much? Why don't you just play and work out baseball wise? Why don't you, if you're a catcher, sit down there, squat and catch some baseball, block He's some baseball. He's practicing the run from the Coyotes. Some swing, bro. Come go on. to the workouts. I want to see. I don't want to see. I, I don't want to see uh, you uh, running up and down, chasing your kid into the pool. What do I care about you and your kid? Oh, He's I only practicing care about running you away from the mess. Coyotes. Come on, bro. Let's you know be that. real here, guys. We only care about these guys. As much. Wait, all right, let's get that joke in. What is it again? <laughs> <laughs> what? I said he's practicing running away from the coyotes. There we go. Oh. Third try to Tom. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's, just your, it's just, it's just your lack of understanding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that. Oh, thank God. That multi-tier three-star. That's... <laughs> it's okay, Papa. It's all right. Look at Rodriguez. Got frozen. Look how he got frozen. Oh, that's nearly <laughs> as... He looks like somebody's passing with ice cream cone. That's nearly as feminine <laughs> as the one when Farachi froze before. The Farachi froze was worse. He looked like he was fr- flirting with me. Rodriguez oh, there you go. Like he had a ice cream cone. What the heck's going on here? Uh, it's, uh, blame it on the virus. <laughs> blame it on the rain. So you were saying blame nobody cares. Rain. Nobody cares about their kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. About Do you really care about Buffalo's little kid jumping in and and swimming? And I don't want him to drown. God forbid. You know, I'm I'm happy that the kid can swim. <laughs> I don't care what his little kid is running around in the backyard. 
Listen, I want to see all of them every single day, kissing, throwing, catching, uh, blocking balls in the dirt, you know, taking swings. I want you to be baseball ready. And for, you guys with kids know what baseball ready is. Baseball yeah, ready. Everybody out there knows. Baseball, you yell at, yeah, they, baseball ready you is yell nice. at those little bats. They, they just get all ready, ready to go. I don't care about anything else but baseball ready. Get I like to see their get yourself you know, personal ready. side a little bit. I, I think it's nice. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, keep, I, you do. I don't really care. I mean, I don't really care. I, you're, it's okay for you. That's good. I, I don't care. I don't care. Just show me your baseball game. Show me your baseball. Training. Show me your jet. Show me you in the cage. Show me you uh, blocking balls in the dirt. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And but that's what show they're on their. Uh, that's what they're on their social media for, trying to entertain fans with uh, a look into their personal life. But I agree with you. Right now, in this scenario. Where they should be playing baseball every day anyway. I don't want to. I don't want to see things that are there to entertain their social media fans. I want to see that they're staying in the baseball shape so that they all don't look like uh, Bartolo when they come back in June. You know. Uh, <laughs> what's wrong, Bartolo? Watch your mouth. <laughs> oh no, there's nothing wrong with Bartolo, but he only will to pull off that physique. <laughs> that sexy, you know? sexy you know, look. Not too many guys that can have that physique and be a. Uh, Good contributing factor on a team. Most of them are, are dead. Being a phenomenal I, I athlete. I think he's I think he's drinking that rum, having some uh plantain burgers. There goes producer Joe's gone. <laughs> Is he gonna he's gonna chime in on the on the comments? Guys, my phone died. <laughs> Remember last week? <laughs> but yeah, no no. I, I wanna I prefer Rodriguez. I'm not against what you're saying. I prefer to see them being baseball ready. But I also like to see them, you know. In this particular time, interacting with their family, what they're doing and stuff, I would prefer to see the warm-ups, to see like, hey, Met fans, I'm ready. Yeah, I agree. But it's cool to see their little personal side, how they're handling handling quarantine and all that kind of stuff. So, And they kind of have to do that now. You, you listen to all these things, and uh, baseball or sport athletes are, are trying to build up their brands. So they they that's what this is what they do. And LeBron James does Taco Tuesday, and uh, all these other guys do their do their thing. So it's a it's just a part of life now, uh, Rodriguez. So it's social social networking at its finest. I don't care about your social network, uh, Buffalo. Then unfollow I them. <laughs> I don't care. I, I just want you to be ready to play for my team. When the season starts, I want you to be there behind the plate. I want you to be ready to hit three hundred. That's all I care about. Do do all the little Ooh. fancy. Sh- they should have to go check because remember what happened to Mespedes. Remember what happened to Mespedes and all those other. And look at Thor. Oh, I need to lift seven hundred pounds. Look at idiots like that that don't know, uh, you know, to be ready for for baseball and try to be bodybuilders and and lifting up trucks and and riding horses and and having you know wild hogs sex with pigs in your back. You know what they're doing? Who knows what they're doing? So should, should they wear like a should they mandatory camera? That's what they should have a camera yeah. with them all times. And and uh, the Will Pond should be able to, you know, Cespedes, boom, hit the thing. And he's out there half naked riding a, a wild boar. Bro, if I'm paying you $30 million a year, yep. I want to check in on you at any time of the day. I would I implant camera in his forehead, okay? A little mini cam in his forehead so I can see exactly <laughs> All right. Then once it hits ten o'clock at night, right from ten to six, you got your time. I turn the camera off. But before ten o'clock, I'm paying you thirty million dollars. Yeah, you're gonna entertain me. I'm gonna have a little Mespedes movie every day. I'm making sure that you're not riding no the wild boar and you know jumping into mud holes or wrestling. So like the or wrestling. Oh, we could do like the Truman Show. The Truman Show. Follow everybody around. <laughs> How fun would that be? All right. Um, the the I'm thinking we save the the five current players and the nucleus for a potentially long run for next week as we're uh, approaching an hour here. Uh, but little fun way to end uh, the show and talk about the best game you've ever attended. I know Keith, you live like two and a half minutes away, so you probably had a lot more to choose from. So <laughs> really. <laughs> 
And you guys in the comments, uh, Cornet, all, all you guys, um, to let us know what your the, the best Mets game that you've ever attended. Keith, you want to get us started? No. Yeah. It's good stuff. Can't hear a word you're saying, Keith. Nothing. I am on mute. And now Talking on mute. There we go. <laughs> work like stuff. Talking work. on mute. I'm on work. <laughs> Um, it's a real thing, as you can see. Uh, there's a lot of great games I've attended. Some of the greatest games were, you know, my buddy George and I, we used to hit every day night. Uh, actually, they didn't do day night. It was just back-to-back doubleheaders back then. And we had an amazing time. But the single best game I've been to, it came down to two decisions. I'm going to give a quick honorary mention was the Grand Slam home run. With um, single. all right, the Grand Slam single, excuse me, um, Ventura. Uh, but as amazing as that game was, probably the best game I've been to was the Arizona game in the playoffs when Todd Pratt hit the home run. Todd Pratt, yeah, to win the I game. George game. and I, George and I had box, uh, no, not box seats, well, upper deck box uh, seats. We were season ticket holders that year. And we were in section two, lower deck, like two rows from the front. And when Todd Pratt hit that home run, it was probably the most electric I have ever felt Shea Stadium. And I was at one of the 1989 playoff games. Uh, But that Todd Pratt home run, it was so electric. 88, excuse me, right. It was so electric. Uh, it was just, I, I couldn't describe it. Like I know George and I, the minute Todd Pratt hit that ball, we stood up. I'm even going to stop rocking for this. We Thank stood you. up. <laughs> we threw our arms in the air. And uh, there was there was a tear in both of our eyes. And we were so ecstatic that this happened. And it was... It, it was something so special. Um, the whole upper deck was, it, it, and if if any of you remember Shea, the old Shea Stadium, which I'm sure most of you listening do, if you're in the upper deck during a sold out game or something crazy happens, you feel the deck. The whole thing shakes. Shaking. Yeah. Yeah. You almost worry that it's going to just collapse on itself, but you really don't care. Because At least you're in the upper deck because then you could just like glide down and you're okay. Everybody right. believe you. You're also in the middle of the celebration. That to me was the best Met game I have ever attended. Uh, it was with my buddy George P. Um, G Money. It was amazing. I, I, I can't, like, I wish I could relive that. When I think of the Mets making the World Series, like in 2015, what, like, when all of us here went to the Sharkies and. I, you know, we had visions of the Mets actually winning the World Series. That is the feeling I was trying to recapture. It's like a heroin addict trying to chase the dragon. That's my dragon. The dragon. Uh, Cornet yes. says it's the J.D. Davis walk-off from last year. That that was the double down the left field line, I think, uh, to, to, to win that game. He must uh, be around 30 years old or younger. He doesn't understand the rest. <laughs> uh, Tim says game six of the '96 World Series. I love you, Tim, but we're talking Mets games, and and uh, he he talks either Todd Hundley's Grand Slam. I don't remember. I, I'm sure he hit uh, a few Grand Slams. I don't remember exactly which game you're talking about. Um, uh, Joe, you want to go next? '88. Um, actually, Timmy. I was at that uh, Jack. It wasn't Jackie Robinson night. It was when they retired Jackie Robinson Zumbo. They had uh, Clinton at the stadium, and we had this ridiculous security. We had to go through metal detectors multiple times to get to the seats. Um, but that was a great game to be at. But the best, the game that really stands in my memory was '88, the night game that we clinched the playoffs. We clinched the Eastern Division. It was in mid-September. I don't remember who we were playing, but it was a full house. We got late tickets. We were in like the last row of the Loge, which if you remember the Loge at at Shea Stadium, you could look out into the parking lot from Mm -hmm. the back of the section. And in the ninth, eighth inning, eighth inning, 
all of the mounted officers, you know, the, the, all the, they had dozens of mounted officers lined up in the parking lot, ready to come into the stadium as soon as the Mets had won after what happened in 86 when they tore up the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stadium was rocking, just like, you know, Keith said, when, when, when it's really rocking, you could feel your whole section bouncing up and down. And I remember it being in a load, it was like, wow, okay, I see the upper deck right above us. And, you know, it was a very <laughs> uncomfortable feeling. But at the same time, seeing the cops and, and the full house and all the signs, we want the Dodgers, we want the Dodgers, because the Dodgers had already clinched the West. And mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was an incredible game to be at. That, I remember that clearly. Senor Rodriguez? Well, I didn't go to too many games when I was young, but um, I have gone to some now that I'm older and I have my own money. Um, <laughs> the, last... <laughs> the game that I went to was more of a sentimental game to me. It was more of a, of a nice little family outing. I actually, uh, we had a daddy-daughter day with uh, myself, my daughter, my two brothers, and they, and we all went to uh, to City Field to watch a game. And it happened to him that New and Heidi's hit three home runs in. Ah, nice. So that was uh, sort of a sort of a nice little memory there. So something I can never forget. Not not too many Mets have hit uh, and they actually done something like that. Great like not, that, which is not too many to do, but it was a players in baseball. With my brothers, we had a we had a blast, and no one won the game for us. Oh, not too not too many. And I, we were hoping for that fourth one, but you know. Whatever, oh. you know, it was, it was fun. It was great. And I don't have an exciting game like you guys do, Bill, but um, that's... No, that's that's a, that was an exciting game. Do you remember oh, Gary Cohen's cool. call on, like, the last one? Kirk knew it, I his third home run of the game. I was, I was on the... I was in my seat. I couldn't hear Gary Cohen. Oh, I don't know if you've seen it afterwards. I mean... Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, for, for me, I... I kind of fell into a, a cool situation. A, a friend of mine, her boss, um, had season tickets down in the in the box uh, level, you know, lower level, so, uh, in late nineties ish. So I was at the uh, Keith. I was at that game with Todd Pratt. I was at the Rob Ventura game. I was at the um, ten run eighth inning against the Braves game uh, mm. against the Braves in the eighth inning. Uh, but it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with uh, Keith because it was the game-winning home run to win a, a series. It was Todd Pratt, and you know, of all people, Todd Pratt hits one over the center field wall. Uh, but just the, I mean, Shea Stadium when the Mets were going good, it was electric. It like, like you guys say, everything was rocking, and you know, all this stuff was going on. Uh, so I, I huh? It moved. The oh yeah, moved, man. yeah. Was yeah. There was actually an album. There was a uh, an album that came out like late '90s. This is how much of a Mets nerd I was. I bought the album. It's called the uh, Sounds That Sounds That Shook Shay. I think it was called. And um, it was it had it was had to be like '99 or 2000 because um, one of the um, one of the little uh, I guess Mets moments in between some of the songs was uh, Steve Phillips announcing that the Mets had acquired Mike Piazza. Uh, and then Who Let the Mets Out was one of the songs on there. I, I, just a Mets nerd. So. <laughs> that's that's Johnny Franco's fault. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Franco. You, you, you know what's funny, though? Just to sidetrack just for a quick second. Um, I, I know all of us, but specifically Rodriguez, uh, Rodriguez, excuse me, Farachi, you and I, we mentioned a lot of games that we were both at. Um, and it's funny, like as Met fans in the Met universe, how often all of our paths cross. Could have walked without, right past each other. It's true, without <laughs> even realizing it. You know, like uh, George, again, my friend George. George and I, I have a lot of Met friends, friends but George and I, well, we were like diehard. We used to go to 60, 70 home games a year. We lived there all summer. Uh, one of the games we used to play is Rusty at All Ages, and we'd find redheaded dudes. <laughs> in age groups and be like, hey, it is Rusty in the 20s. Hey, it is Rusty in the 30s. Hey, it is Rusty in his 50s. And, uh, you know, it's just you, you, when you're a Met fan, it's, it's amazing um, the, the, the kinship and the bond that we all share. Yep. And it's mostly through suffering, though. That's the problem. 
Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say a lot of that comes through suffering, and I, I'm sure yes. the long suffering franchises out there are kind of like the same. Um, but that, yeah, it's it's a great thing about being a Mets fan. Um, something that I, you know, I told you guys I should be ashamed. It's social media time. Haven't done a good job with the social media lately, so I just want to run through that real quick before we end. Um, Follow us all over social media. You know, the parent company is cinesportstalk.com. Uh, so you can follow cinesportstalk.com on the Facebook fan page is with the dot com. Take away the dot com. And that's the Facebook group where it's just like constant memes and this and news and all this stuff, all this fun stuff. Uh, Twitter, we are at the P-I-I-T-B show. What was that? <laughs> like somebody 18 wheeler right next to you. <laughs> No, it was it was, uh, that, that it was for amazing. dramatic effect. The mm, mm, <laughs> yeah. PWI show, right? So the same on Instagram at the PWI TV show, uh, and then Facebook group uh, for us is the Put in the Book Show by Cinder Sports Talk. That's exactly what it says down there at the bottom, almost. Uh, and the Put in the Book Show, plain and simple. That's our fan page. Uh, and then YouTube and Snapchat. It's at Cinder Sports Talk um, for for both of those guys there. Uh, you can also listen to us. All over, uh, wherever you listen to your favorite shows and podcasts, on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Anchor, and uh, um, you know all that good stuff. Again, immediately following. I hope I'm saying this right, Tim. You let me know. Following our show on the Cine Sports Talk Network is going to be the Just Too Sweet show, uh, and then later on in the week, uh, the Jader and Kyle show is going to go on Friday night. Last week they did a, just a marathon. Four and a half hour show on the entirety of the um, Marvel Cinematic Universe. So they went through that. They had some guests from the Schmodown and, and that, that stuff. So this week they're going to rank the MCU movies in order. Uh, and then uh, for their movie that they're going to discuss this week, they did a, a, a poll on, on Cine Sports Talk. And it is going to be Game Night from a few years ago. I don't know if you guys saw that. That's with Jason Bateman. Uh, pretty damn funny. Uh, I love Jason Bateman. So. Um, maybe I take a break from this because it's so long-winded. I'm out of breath here. All this social media stuff. All right. Any uh, closing remarks here? Tim says I love going to Shea. I like hearing that from from a Yankee fan. Hop the seven train and spend Saturday there. Get a ticket and a hot dog and a soda for twenty bucks. Yeah, those days are gone. <laughs> you remember the old Sunday Daily News? Um, I think it was get an upper deck ticket for five mm-hmm. bucks. Yep. Um, for the Sunday used to paper. love the Daily News. Yeah. Tim Daily used to paper. join us. Hey, yeah. all the guys. Yankee Saw some fans good pictures. Not, just yeah. baseball fans. We, they used to join us at Shea. You know, we said we because we live right in the area. We jump on, go to the game, have a good. I don't time. appreciate. I don't appreciate the other Fred Werney a Yankee jersey there though. I'm going to call him out on that. All right. Well, uh, he's a little plastic special. <laughs> all right. Any closing remarks here for this week, Keith? The headed, just the head, the headed. Uh, you know, same old. Stay safe. Be a hero. Stay home. And let's go Mets. Mr. Rodriguez. Baseball is coming, people. Be ready. No Woo! Oh, it's coming, baby. So uh, let's just make sure that we're all healthy and happy and alive to see it. Be safe. God, oh, God bless. Not you, Farachi. I know you don't believe. So, <laughs> Please, let's go Mets. Let's go Mets. Producer Joe. We're maybe four or five weeks away from real baseball, spring training. That's exciting. Let's start pounding it down. Let's start getting the excitement back. You know, give us something to do. Give us something to have. Give us something to distract us. So we're getting there. Hang on. Maybe four or five weeks. We're actually going to have a uh, some actual like news. <laughs> Holy some crap! News. I can't wait. Yeah, you know. So everybody, stay home, stay safe, stay alive, because we're almost there. Yes, oh. we're, we're we're almost there at the finish line here for for baseball. Uh, and Joe is loving that new cut feel back there. I love, love it. it. It's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> great. 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 Um, one topic for next week. Uh, Mets pitching coach Jeremy Hefner is saying that Stroman can easily push Jacob DeGrom for best in the rotation. We'll talk about that next week. That's a tease, baby. Um, 
Same, same old, same old stuff. Uh, come over to CineSportsTalk.com, and you know we've got as much as we can possibly do. Uh, we're doing as many shows as we can do each week, just to keep you guys entertained. We appreciate you know the Wait, eighteen. Why, why would you bias? Everybody gets to hear me, Rodriguez, and producer. I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to. I promise, I'll get there. Okay, um, well, get right to it then. No, because I got to talk about the shows. Uh, <laughs> The Kiva Catches Up is the one that Scott and Kiva do. That That's a Monday night thing now um, where they talk about, uh, you know, Kiva has not seen some of the incredible movies that have that have come out, you know, back in the day. Uh, yesterday they did Fight Club. Uh, first rule, don't talk about Fight Club. Uh, so that's what they did yesterday. Uh, we got this show, Just Too Sweet, the um, jader and kyle show and all this shooting the shit all that stuff uh we try, as we try to keep as entertained as possible and my closing words is cheers to health and we will see you next week this is chocolate cheers. joe cheers peace out cheers. Cheers.